Hello everyone, so welcome you all to Ashok Tutorials Megalaya's first MTED channel. So my dear students, as you know that we have been discussing uh, class 10's health education, right? So class 10's health education, we have already discussed unit 1, unit 2 and unit 3. So unit 1, 2 and 3. So in this video, we are going to discuss unit number 4, alright? Unit number 4. So let us see what we have. So the name of the chapter, all right, before that, I think it's better I zoom, right? So let me zoom it for you. All right. So see, I'll zoom it in the maximum way possible, right? Because you all are watching it in, you know, mobile screen. So it has to be big enough, right? Then only you can, uh, you know, study it effortlessly. So let us see. So the name of the chapter is International Health. So we are not going to talk only about India. We are not going to talk only about Bangladesh. We are not going to talk about only China. We are going to talk about the entire world. So when we talk about the health conditions of the entire world, we call it as international health, right? So let us see the introduction. This is just the introduction of the unit, right? Let us see what we have. So introduction. People of different countries meet together in different places for different purposes. So we all know that, you know, different people, people from Bangladesh, people from India, people from USA, people from Russia, they all meet together for a specific purpose, right? So recently, you know, that, uh, you know, there was a meeting. So all the global leaders or all the leaders of the countries, they met together, right? to discuss different do's and don'ts in order to, you know, uh, in order to set up businesses and, you know, in order to uh, maintain the, you know, relationship between one nation and the other, right? So let us see, travelers need to prepare themselves for the health problems in the countries they visit. Besides, many countries have similar health problems. See, now what happens? we all have seen the covid 19 scenario right the coronavirus scenario that was you know the covid which lasted for uh not lasted actually i would say it started by the year 2019 right so it was a deadly deadly virus and you know it has killed many lives many innocent lives the coronavirus has taken so you know here what they are saying is that travelers so suppose you want to go to you know australia so what you have to do you have to do a health checkup why you need to do a health checkup you need to do a health checkup so that you know you are not carrying any kind of disease with yourself which might impact the people of australia or if the people from australia are coming to india then they will also be checked suppose so you know even the people coming from australia they will also be checked for their medical conditions so even the people from australia they will be checked thoroughly for if any they are carrying any kind of you know health related issues or any medical conditions they have or they might be carrying any communicable diseases so for that they will be thoroughly checked all right and uh, like so whoever visits the country they will be thoroughly checked why so that you know one person will carry the disease to the other country and it will spread like a wildfire across the nation so in order to prevent that kind of scenario this is what the government does so the united nations has has many specialized agencies which are engaged in various activities aimed at improving the health of the people all over the world now all over the world now you know united nations so there are different countries which are you know taking part or which are forming a union in the united nations and they have a common goal so what is the common goal they have they have the common goal of protecting the health conditions of different countries together right now let us see do you know number one so the United Nations is committed to various health programs arrived at promoting and protecting good health worldwide. So as I have already told you that the United Nations has got different type of programs. All right. Why? In order to protect the health condition of the people worldwide. Now let us see point number two. So point number two says the chief objective of international health organization is 
prevention of the spread of communicable diseases from one country to another so this is what i told you just now what is this this means that you know the main function the main objective of the united nations is to protect one country from the disease which may be possibly carried by the travelers or the person from another country all right then the world health organization all of you know this right who have you heard of who yes you did right so what is who who is the world world health organization all right so who leads the un's efforts in promoting and protecting good health it came into force on the 7th of april 1948 we celebrate this date as world health day so you know who who came into force on the 7th of april 1948 all right and this 7th of april we celebrate as the world health day right let's go to the next now point number four so let us see point number four so travelers need to prepare themselves for protecting their own health and the health of the people of the countries they visit so this is what we are talking on and on that whoever is going to travel to any country he need to make sure that he's physically mentally emotionally well and fine and he is not getting any kind of communicable diseases which might be transmitted to the person of another country he is going to visit right all right so all right so here the chapter starts what is the name of the chapter importance of international health so you might be wondering like sir why do we need to study why do we need to study international health so let us see the reasons so why are international health programs very important see this is what they also have written here so let us see imagine there are two neighboring countries all right let's imagine about india and china all right so in the first all the people are healthy so in the first country suppose in india all the people are healthy in india all right in the second country that is let us assume it to be china most of the people are sick and epidemics of cholera and malaria are very common so suppose they are asking you to imagine two countries the first the first country is india and the second country is china all right so suppose now the second country that is china is suffering from epidemics of cholera and malaria and it is very common all right so now what happens let us see the flies can cross the border and the spray and spread cholera in neighboring country now you know that we cannot stop the flies we cannot stop the birds we cannot stop the mosquitoes there are no boundaries for them right the boundaries the borders are for human beings the boundaries between the countries are not for the are, are actually for the people not for the animals right so the mosquitoes the fly the indian fly will fly to china the chinese fly will come to india right so this is how they will fly and what happens let us see mosquitoes can cross the border and spread malaria among the people of the other country so now the mosquitoes can go from one country to another right or they can infect a person from china and that person if he or she happens to come to india then they will carry the communicable disease which might be transmitted from one person to another right so now let us see can the people of the first country feel secure and remain healthy when the neighboring country has much communicable communication communicable diseases now see they are saying like can the first country means can india be happy can india be happy and safe if india sees that the neighboring country that is china is suffering from malaria then can india feel safe no the first country is under constant fear see fear of cholera and malaria epidemic so india will be you know scared india will be fearful that yes maybe some day the disease from china might come to india just like the covid has come from china to india right this is what we know coronavirus originated in china and it came into india and spread to the world wide right so this shows that no country is secure in respect of health until all countries are free from communicable diseases so see now here what does it say see if if india is 
safe if the people of India they do not have any disease but the people of China they have disease then we cannot say the world is safe suppose if the Russian people they are not safe they are having diseases and Japanese people they are safe then also we cannot say that the world is safe so in order to have a safe and sound world to live in we need to you know we need to consider the health of the members of each and every country in the world right so that's why we are studying this particular topic today so see this is the logo of united nations logo of united nations would you like to see what is united nations let us see you united nations when was it originated or this and that if you want to know you can just have a look here so this is the logo right can you see the logo here this is the logo right so if you open the Wikipedia you will see see all this information you can see for yourself right you can see all this the history but the head the main main things are written here headquarter you can see where the headquarter is located then the largest city also you can see these are the members right members of United Nations so you can see membership 193 member states are there then who is the secretary who is the who is the general secretary you can see the photo right so you just see here so these informations you just read for yourself right so all these things you can read by yourself right then let me just directly go here right so joint action joint action on the part of countries is needed to promote the health of the people of all countries the member of countries of the united nations have re released or realized the importance of international health programs now you see as we have seen 182 or 193 members are there in the united nations right who have joined the united nations union so that they can fight together the outbreak of different type of communicable diseases right so let us see here individual countries no longer act in complete independence in controlling diseases in the improvement of health international health programs are being implemented throughout the world now you see individual countries do not function all alone we cannot say india we want to function all alone we will take care of the people of india by ourselves no we cannot do that we need to work hand in hand together with other countries right so that we can stop the spread widespread of communicable diseases coming from or going from India into other countries right now efforts are directed towards helping nations for the betterment of the health of the people yes we are making efforts so that one country can help the other country right now the World Health Organization see WHO you need to remember this class 10 students you have to remember the full form of WHO for your exam point of view now the United Nations Children's Fund this one UNICEF full form also you need to know then food and agriculture organization fao full form also you should know right are some of the programs and specialized agencies of united nations suppose if they are asking you an examination like give the three agencies of united nations you can say who fao and unicef right now they provide assistance in such fields as health maternal and child health, nutrition, social welfare, and education to millions of people all over the world. Now, what do these FAO, WHO, UNICEF do? They work in, they work in, you know, helping the health of the people, then maternal, the mother's health and the child's health, then the nutrition, nutritional requirements of the people, and social welfare and education to millions of people all over the world, right? great so now you see now we are going to study about who so first of all let us just try to see it in google what is who world health organization so wikipedia if we open here see 
This is World Health Organization. This is news actually. I don't want to see news. I want to see the Wikipedia. This one I want to see. Yes. So this is the Wikipedia of United Nations organizations. All right. See the headquarter is in Geneva, right? The headquarter of WHO is in Geneva, right? So you can see United Nations specialized agency. It's a specialized agency. Then you can see who is the director. Then parent organizations. You will see. Oh, these. There are lots of things you can just see for yourself, right? You can just see for yourself. Let's go to our chapter. So, the World Health Organization (WHO) was established on the seventh of April, nineteen forty-eight. This is what already we have seen, right? So, it was established in the year seventh April, nineteen hundred and forty-eight, right? Its headquarters is in Geneva. Where is Geneva? The Geneva is in Switzerland, right? Remember that. The regional office, the regional office for Southeast Asia is in New Delhi. Now, if we talk about Southeast Asia, where is the you know regional office located? The regional office is located in New Delhi. Remember that in India, New Delhi, right? Now, what are certain main objectives? So the its main objective is the attainment of the highest possible level of health by all the people. So the main objective of WHO is that it believes in accomplishing the good health conditions for the for all the people living on earth the WHO has at present more than 150 member countries see now in WHO at present there are around 150 countries you know who are working together for the better health of the citizen of their own country and the world as a whole now the main functions so let us see what are some of the main functions of who number one it plans and coordinates health activities on a global basis at the request of member countries it assists them in planning out health programs strengthening their health services and training the health workers now see what does it do it plans and coordinate coordination is there between what between health activities of the global you know of the world at, all, at the global basis all right so at the request of member countries suppose one country is suffering from one type of disease then that country may approach the who and seek certain help medical help medical help or any type of help they require right or the manpower they require so the who promotes the WHO promotes medi medical research and exchange of scientific information and is very useful for all countries. See now, what happens is that the WHO, they have got great, great scientists, right, doctors. So they work together, they, you know, they make vaccines or they do certain type of research or, you know, they, they already make strategies in order to, you know, prevent certain type of communicable diseases or to you know fight that diseases so all this information all the scientific information you know is given by the scientists who are working in coordination with one another in the WHO all right now the WHO provides evidence-based health guidance with regards to international travel to medical professionals travelers and member states it also states health conditions and related requirements for entry at major events. Furthermore, the WHO monitors travel, transport, and trade restrictions during any outbreak of endemic diseases such as the 2014 Ebola virus outbreak. Now you see, what does it say? It says that WHO is the one which is, you know, promoting or restricting the entry or exit of the people, the immigration of the people, immigration or immigration of people coming or going from one country to another it is controlled by the who it is responsible for checking the health of the people like only the healthy people should visit the countries and those people who are carrying any type of communicable diseases should abstain from visiting that country right now another function is the who keeps communicable diseases under constant watch collect data and sends out information on the health matters now you see 
whenever there is an outbreak of communicable diseases so the who they play a vital role as they keep a watch on it they are constantly watching it all right now there are specialized provisions related to dangerous diseases for example any person arriving from any country must have a health certificate stating that he is free from certain communicable diseases and has taken preventive immunization now you see any person we just cannot randomly go to japan we just cannot randomly go to france we need to have a health certificate which will declare that so and so do not have any kind of communicable disease and is medically fit to visit the country he or she is willing to visit all right now the international health regulation this also full form you have you need to remember class 10 all right remember this full uh, full form so the international health regulations an international legal instrument binding on the 196 countries across the world requires the countries to report outbreak of certain diseases and other health risks to the who it also states a number of procedure that the who must follow when working towards upholding global health security now see you know it is the duty of 190 countries to inform if there is any outbreak of any communicable disease in the country not to keep it as secret you know uh, what we know about covid 19 or coronavirus is that the chinese the china they have kept it as secret right they did not inform the entire world that they ha they are having a communicable disease in their country because of which we know that the entire country has to suffer right if they would have informed the who that yes this so and so called covid 19 has you know taken place or has you know uh, spread in our country then maybe the who might have done something and there would have been less loss of life of the people right but unfortunately it was not informed so now let us see uh, all right let's go to the next function now this one the most important measure for prevention of certain disease is the production of vaccine see vaccine covid 19 vaccine remember covid shield one is covid shield then another one is uh covaxin right in case the vaccine turns out to be ineffective it gives a false sense of security it is for this reason that the who set standard for quality control vaccine see now what do you think do you think that the scientists they want to make the vaccines and they make the vaccines and distribute to people no it is not so they go through a lots and lots and lots of you know trials a test they do lots of tests in order to find or in order to come to a conclusion whether the vaccine they have made is safe and secure to be distributed to the common people or not so don't think that covid vaccines like covaxin or covid shield they have just prepared in the laboratory and they have just injected into your body no it is not so it has got it has gone through a lot a lot of trial and error or tested tests right it has been tested on different people different age group different genders right and different you know there were different conditions parameters were there on which on grounds grounds were there on which it was tested and then only it was given for the public to you know to be vaccinated now let us see the WHO, the WHO collaborates with member countries in disease eradication programs, the smallpox. The smallpox eradication program stands out as a major achievement of international cooperation for health. See, now we do not have smallpox in the world, right? We don't have smallpox. Of course, we have chickenpox, but we don't have smallpox. It is already eradicated from the world so it is the biggest achievement of who and who does not alone you know holds the credit for it it is the different countries who are the members of who who have worked together and you know have achieved this success of eradicating the smallpox from the world now let us see the world health day as we know it is celebrated on the 7th of april is an annual event making the anniversary of coming into force of the constitution of the world health organization the aim of who is to pub publicize a theme of importance for the health of mankind for example the theme for 1976 was foresight prevents blindness see 
In the year 1976, the WHO's theme was Foresight Prevents Blindness. Now, what do you understand by foresight prevents blindness? So, foresight means to see something before it happens, right? So, suppose uh, you are able to make out the do's and don'ts of certain type of situation. Like, suppose you, if you are behaving in such a way, then what are the consequences that you might have to bear or you might have to see? So that you analyze right before something happens. It can also be said, like, not said actually, but I can just uh, uh, tell you, like, we know that prevention is better than cure, right? If we are preventing something, something bad, disease or anything, then we don't have to cure that, right? So in a similar way, foresight prevents blindness means if you are able to see something the consequences the pros and cons of that particular event then you know you can prevent it right now let's see what we have the observance of who world health day is usually organized by national or local health services so who national community com committees UN associations, international organizations, non-governmental organizations working in the health field and other bodies can give valuable assistance. In order to avoid dispersal of effort, it is desirable that all World Health Day activities be properly coordinated. This is usually done by the officials of the health service. So we know that we all celebrate World Health Day, right? So why do we celebrate World Health Day? We celebrate World Health Day in order to spread the awareness among the people to, you know, educate the people to make the people know like what are the do's and don'ts how can we prevent the communicable diseases what are the you know remedies they can take what are the preventive methods they can follow you know and to remind ourselves that if we work together as a team if we work together as a citizen of the country if we work together as human beings then you know there are nothing that we can you know we cannot do there is nothing that we cannot do so we can do everything so everything is possible when we work in coordination with one another when we cooperate with one another right so now let us see unicef we have already studied who now let us study about unicef so united nations children's fund so before it was known as united nations international children's emergency fund it was known as before like that but now they have changed it into directly united nations children's fund all right now originally called the united nations international children's emergency fund so as i said the unicef was established in 1946 when was unicef established my dear students of class 10 it was established in the year 1946 1946 all right the words international and emergency related dropped so these two words are already dropped right now all right let me just yeah so everyone knows that children needs a good start and a chance to lead active and useful lives as adult the aim of unicef is to cooperate with developing countries in their efforts to improve the conditions of their children and youth and prepare them to contribute to the progress of the society now you see we all know that children are the future of the nation right children are the future of the nation so in we we know that children are the future of the nations then we need to you know work or we need to take care of the children in such a way that they are able to you know develop with the full potential they have they should be physically fit mentally fit psychologically fit socially fit emotionally fit right so we should be able to you know uh, make the children grow in such a way that you know they do not have to compromise with any type of diseases or they do not have to you know compromise with any type of you know disadvantages or disabilities all right so we should make sure that the children they grow in the most possible and healthy way all right now let us calm down and see all right so the main aim of UNICEF is to provide humanitarian and developmental assistance to children and mothers. See, the main aim of UNICEF is to help the mother and the child. 
It has effective partnership with governments and non-government organizations through which it works towards bringing peaceful, practical solutions to the women and children who are at risk. Now, see, especially, you know, we need to protect the women and the children. So, the UNICEF, they work together with the NGOs, the non-government organization, as well as the governmental organization in order to provide the help or the aid to the needy children and the women. All right. Now, the UNICEF is committed to ensure that all children and mother are able to access the knowledge of how to prevent HIV infection and also to provide adequate treatment care support to ones with the infection. Now see, UNICEF is also committed, you know, in order to help the mother and the child know that how they can prevent the HIV AIDS and what are the preventive measures and treatment they can take in case they are infected or are on the verge of getting infected right now the unicef works towards ensuring that the children worldwide get proper vaccine therefore immunization is one of the key focus of unicef now see unicef also believes that the children they get vaccinated worldwide which means the children of every country they should get the vaccination so one of the best example of vaccination is what polio vaccine right so we give polio vaccines to boond zindagi ki right two drops of lives now let us see the next one the unicef assists in the control of diseases which are responsible for mortality among mothers and children such as vitamin deficiencies anemia and trachoma now you see unicef you know the unicef also take care of certain type of diseases which might affect the mother and the child some of the example can be the, the diseases which are caused due to the deficiency of vitamin vitamins different type of vitamins all right like rickets or you know scurvy beriberi anemia or trachoma right now a large part of unicef assistance is in the form of equipment and supply. See, major help given by the UNICEF is by providing the different type of equipments. Depending on the type of projects, UNICEF may provide equipment and drugs for child health services. The UNICEF also provide technical support for food conservation. Now you see, the UNICEF, they are providing the support by giving the equipments needed, by giving the medicines needed, by giving the drugs needed by the children or the mother of different countries. Now, let us study food and agricultural organization. So this is the symbol, all right? Food and agricultural organization. Now the food and agricultural organization was established in which year? In the year 1945, where? At Quebec in Canada, all right? It was established in Canada. Now it has its headquarter where? It has its headquarter in Rome. Remember this, it has its headquarter in Rome, all right? The, the objective of food and agricultural organization are to raise levels of nutrition and standards of living. See, the main objective of food and agricultural organization is to raise the level of what? The level of nutrition. They should be able to provide the nutritive food to the needs of the people of the country. And, you know, they should uplift the living standard of the people of the country. Then what? objective it has got to to improve production and distribution of all food and agricultural products from farms forests and fisheries now you see one of the objective of food and agricultural organization is to improve to improve what to improve the production from the farms to improve the production from the forest to improve the production from the fisheries or poultry all right why because to meet the demands of the increasing population right now to better the economic condition of the rural population and also you know to better or to make the upliftment of the rural population by providing them with some economical you know benefits so let us see what we have next so the food and agricultural organization promotes the development of basic soil and water resources of the country see they also work in order to improve the quality of soil and water resources of different countries it also encourages the establishment of stable market for the 
commodities so also it also helps in establishing a market you know which the people of the concerned countries can make use of in order to buy the essential commodities in asia what happens the food and agriculture organization has done commendable work various inter governmental commissions and councils such as the international rice commission have contributed to the green revolution it also provides technical assistance in such fields as nutrition and school or oh, sorry in food management all right so you know it has helped a lot especially it has done major work where in asia where in asia right so now let us see international health regulations so what are certain type of regulations so from from 1851 onwards 1851 remember the date so from 1851 onwards there were attempts at coming to an agreement on communicable diseases control at the international level a series of conferences took place in europe in europe and america to discuss sanitary control of international traffic these attempts preceded the formation of who now what happens see we all we know already that who came into being in the year 1948 but this international health regulation it came into force on 1851 which means international health regulations came before who right so it you know they were attempt it attempted at coming to an agreement to control the communicable diseases not only at the national level but at the international level all right and a series of conferences or meetings or workshops were organized and it took place in europe as well as in america and they have discussed how to control the you know the waste management or international traffic or the sanitary conditions so these attempts preceded the formation of who so as i already told you now let us see in 1951 in 1951 what happened the who adopted the international sanitary regulations so who who adopted the international sanitary regulations it is who who itself who adopted the international sanitary regulations in which year in the year 1951 you have to remember this these were replaced and renamed as the international health regulations in 1969 see international sanitary regulation was renamed named again as what as international health regulations in which year in the year 1969 the purpose of these regulations is to ensure the maximum scrutiny against the international spread of diseases with a minimum interference with the world traffic now its main objective or aim is to you know provide the mac uh, you know to ensure what to ensure the scrutiny maximum scrutiny against any type of spread of communicable diseases the regulation are intended to detect detection reduction or elimination of the source from which infection spreads and to improve sanitation in border check post ports and airports so this was the main function of you know international health regulation right well now let us see the main aspect of international health regulation relate to the prevention of spread of communicable diseases and immunization in international health certificates for travelers who go abroad now see their main functions of international health regulations were the prevention of communicable diseases then immunization and you know to provide the health certificates to the travelers who go abroad Immunization is one of the most widely accepted and practiced preventive measures against a person getting a disease. We all know what is immunization, right? Immunization means making somebody immune to a certain disease. So immunization produces resistance in a person against disease. Yes. Suppose if someone is immunized against whooping cough, then that person will never get whooping cough because he or she is already immunized, right? Those who have been immunized have obtained international certificates of vaccination so those people who receive immunization they get the international certificates of vaccination these we also those who have taken the covid-19 vaccine we also have got the certificates right covid shield or covaxin certificate whatever you know vaccines we have taken so accordingly we got the certificates right so at the international level also we get the certificates for our health updates 
So these certificates are issued to travelers by their respective government. The certificates are checked during the travel. So we know that, you know, when the coronavirus was at peak and we were traveling from uh, Tura to Shillong or Shillong to William Nagar or Shillong to Kohati, then the government officials, they used to check our, they used to check our what? They used to check our COVID certificates, right? They used to check the certificates, whether we have taken the first dose or second dose or third dose, they used to check, right? So this is what happens when you visit any other country. Now, international conventions held in various places decided in favor of uniform pattern of international health regulations to ensure maximum safety against the spread of diseases. Now you see international conventions held in various places decided in favor of uniform pattern of international health regulations. So now, you know, there are different type of conferences and workshops which takes place when different member countries, they come together and they discuss and, you know, and they formulate different type of strategies in order to fight the different type of diseases which might occur or which might have a negative impact in the entire world as COVID-19 had, right? So now some small paragraphs are given. See quarantine. Before you might not know what a quarantine is, but now you know what a quarantine is, right? So when people was, were suffering from COVID-19, they were asked or not even suffering. Suppose if somebody has come from Delhi, they are coming from Delhi to Shillong or from Delhi to Kohati or from Tura to Shillong or from Tura to Joai. So what happened? They were asked to stay at home. They were asked to stay at quarantine, right? That staying at home all alone without meeting with the family members is called quarantine, right? So we were asked to quarantine, stay inside the house for some were asked to stay for seven days, some were asked to stay for 14 days, some were asked to stay for 21 days, some were asked to stay for 28 days at quarantine. Quarantine means, suppose if we expect somebody has come from Tura to Shillong and we expect that they, that person might have been infected by COVID-19. So seven days that person will stay alone and then if that person is developing the symptoms then we can immediately take him or her to the hospital and do the treatment but suppose if that infected person is not staying under quarantine and that person he do not know that he's suffering or not but he's roaming in and around here so he will infect all the people who will be coming in contact with him or her right so that's why quarantine is very important so quarantine is a period during which persons who might spread an infectious disease especially travelers are kept in isolation right remember this ships suspected of carrying infections are kept isolated on its arrival at the port Hence, quarantine places restrictions on the entrance to and exit from place or premises where a case of communicable disease exists. Animals are also placed under restrictions in similar situations. So, quarantine means whatever we doubt, whoever we doubt, we will keep them in isolation or we will keep them in, you know, alone. We will keep them alone to see if they are developing the symptom or not creative American relief everywhere so what is the full form of care C-A-R-E care so what is the full form of care cooperative American relief everywhere so care is a volunteer relief agency it was created to mobilize relief supplies to war-torn Europe so you see now care is a voluntary relief agency it's an agency which helped the people who suffer from war care has now grown into one of the world's largest NGOs or right? this care is an NGO non-governmental organizations international voluntary relief and development organizations now care presently operates in 94 countries worldwide now see these cooperative American relief everywhere you will find in 94 countries worldwide all right now care has been working in india since 1946 so care is also present in india right and it has been working in our country since 1946 however it formally established itself in the country in 1950 see care has been working in india since 1948 but it officially established itself in the year 1950 currently care is working on different projects in india such as mp madhya pradesh nutrition projects Bridhi in West Bengal and Aksha 
project in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. See, so this care is working in MP, it is working in West Bengal, it is working in Chhattisgarh and it is working in Jharkhand, alright? So now this is the end and these are certain things for you. I hope you also feel good, right? To study from, you know, to study from Ashok Tutorials channel. So I hope you are having good time studying with us and we also have very good time you know teaching you all and we believe that you are understanding what we are teaching and we will see more and more what to do right so in this video only this much so thank you everyone for staying connected with the show tutorials make us first channel